So many people are like that guy, stuck in the matrix and will fight to defend their outdated and limiting beliefs. Only those who are free from the limiting beliefs about plant-based foods get to live a healthier and more aware life. Unfortunately it's sad and uncomfortable to be around people who are close-minded and have limiting beliefs, especially when those beliefs cause animal suffering, environmental destruction and they are obstructionists to forward progress. They simply look foolish, and those who see their foolishness are discouraged from pointing it out, because foolish people, like that man on TV, will fight to defend their limiting beliefs making it more uncomfortable for everyone, instead of doing any self-reflection, or admitting the truth and becoming a better person. A human being is part of a whole, called by us the universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings, as something separated from the rest a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circles of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. Albert Einstein The mind is so powerful. When someone is unaware of how powerful their mind is, they become a victim of it. That man is a victim of his own anti-vegan mentality. It's sad and uncomfortable to witness. We all suffer from his close-mindedness. If only more people like him would choose the luscious and lovely vegan sausage more often, instead of complaining that the exact same sausage is sort of almost cardboard, tissue paper. In some ways, we choose what we like as much as what we like chooses us. That man has the choice to like vegan sausages. Yet he chooses not to. It has very little to do with how it tastes. When this realization is recognized it is very empowering. I can choose to like healthy food. Plant-based foods are delicious. I will choose to taste food for all it brings to the table. Ironically, I consciously choose to dislike the taste of meat. This is because of what it is, dead animal flesh from a factory farm. I'd rather not like the taste of meat, in the same way I would rather not like the taste of human flesh. This is my conscious choice, so I am aware when meat tastes good and I'll admit it so I don't look foolish like this anti-meat. Most vegans will admit that meat tastes good, but choose to see it as disgusting and compassion. Comes from, and are starting to buy healthier, sustainable animal products. You've done well, Leo. You are the one. Check it. Ahem. There are many facets of the Matrix yet to be exposed. Come on, we're going in. Wow! This place is great! <laughs> I love uh, what they've done with no, the past. Leo. I wonder if they have room for any pills. Leo. Look through the illusion of the Matrix. This is the way most dairy farms used to be. See what's really here. This is a modern day dairy factory. It can be called a farm. Most of our milk and cheese come from places like this. Most cows spend their entire lives between here and the milking pond. These unhealthy conditions often make them sick despite dairy antibiotics. Their tails are cut off to Get down! These are agents of the Matrix. They are pumping these poor animals with RBGH, an artificial growth hormone that Canada and the European Union are both bad. What's that? The calves are separated from their mothers at birth. They are being fed milk replacer that's made in part from cow's blood. You know. Yes, Leo. The dead are fed back to the living. Mad cow disease can be spread by this unnatural muffin driven practice.
Are you sure he's the one? So nice of you to join us, Mr. Hamderson. My name is I will admit that I have a strong bias for a plant-based whole food diet. Primarily because of these core values I have, health and vitality, truth and awareness, compassion and kindness, sustainability and environmentalism, harmony and balance with the earth. I stopped buying meat many years ago primarily because of where it comes from, the atrocity of factory farms and animal agriculture in the 21st century. Once my awareness expanded out large enough to metaphorically hear the screams that these animals make, living a life of horror, separated from their mothers and kept in small confined areas as if they are just a resource, it became a natural step to stop taking part in such a destructive, self-centered, and close-minded activity of buying and eating animal products. In the same way most people wouldn't buy dog meat or eat dogs, as most people have a good awareness of dogs so they naturally won't do it. The reason society doesn't eat dog is due to basic empathy and awareness. Yet society in general lacks that awareness and empathy for farm animals, yet pigs have equal intelligence and personality to dogs. From there I had to learn about nutrition to change my diet so that I can live by my values. I was happy to discover that in the 21st century, there has been so much research on the topic that it's now safe to say that a plant-based diet is an extremely healthy diet, when following a few nutrition-based guidelines. I learned the important role of fiber in diet. The more the better. I also learned that food has an extremely complex relationship with nutrients and absorption of those nutrients, as well as the unexpected benefits of fasting. I enjoy the topics of plant-based eating and how it's so positive in all these categories, environmental, ethical, philosophical, spiritual, and of course, nutritional. I will admit that I have a strong bias for a plant-based whole food diet. Primarily because of these core values I have, health and vitality, truth and awareness, compassion and kindness, sustainability and environmentalism, harmony and balance with the earth, the atrocity of factory farms violates these values. I stopped buying meat many years ago. Pri Overcoming confirmation bias and listening to doctors who recommend eating meat. I definitely am aware of my confirmation bias, as I really enjoy listening to plant-based doctors. I find meat advocates irritating as their actions demonstrate they don't share my values, even if they seem like reasonable and nice people. A lot of the statements meat advocates make are anti-vegetable, claiming they are poisonous or low in nutrients or they define the scientific consensus research, claiming that science itself is corrupt and bias. Advocating eating meat seems to requires cognitive dissonance, or, ignorance is bliss, mentality. Despite this, I still take time to listen to people who advocate a meat-centered diet. I want to understand them and talk in a respectful way despite the negative feeling I get from their level of ignorance and callous self-centeredness that is required to eat animal products in the 21st century. I know about Weston A. Price Foundation and Mikla Peterson and Dr. Gundry Plant Paradox. I've listened to the claims, and the modern science that debunks them. Those who believe them often are seeking out their confirmation bias on the side of hoping that eating meat is actually a good thing. There is so much good research done that compare meat-centered diets with plant-based whole food diets for health, such as this article about cancer titled, Research Shows Plant-Based Diets Are Better Than Ketogenic Diets for Cancer Risk in Long-Term Health. Eating meat require perpetrating suffering Suffering is the main theme I get from the carnism, keto, and carnivore diet, whether the person is aware of the suffering it causes or not, it's inherently required. Spiritually and karmically, it all comes back to the person making the decision. The person on a meat-centered diet may feel good while they are eating, but they require more and more suffering of animals just to feel good. That doesn't sound healthy or holistic to me. Spiritually, if someone cause sentient being suffering, that suffering will come back to haunt that person, often through oppression, or confusion to why life seems unfair. I've noticed those who eat meat tend to be anti-government. I believe this is because of spiritual and karmic reasons. 
The concept of the government oppressing citizens is metaphorically the same as citizen oppressing animals as resources and food. If someone oppresses animals on a daily basis, they tend to feel that they are the ones being oppressed most often by the government. By stopping their oppressive diet, they free themselves from the feeling of being oppressed. It's tied into the spiritual concept, in order to health the world, we much first heal ourselves. The meat and dairy industry is an industry that makes money from the suffering of slave animal resources. It's rooted in evil. I get most big corporations are profit driven and destructive, but the animal agriculture tortures animals to increase profits. It's such an atrocity and worth fighting against or at least boycotting. Like all evil corporations they have lobbyists and marketing to change laws and influence public opinion. People have to unlearn a lot to get the awareness, compassion, and empathy required to go plant-based based on awareness of the industry and the suffering. Our society is sick because of what this industry has done to manipulate consumers into believing animal suffering is worth overlooking. Meat eaters and those who buy animal products fund that industry. It's within our power to reduce the power and profitability of this industry, but does require people to live by core values and care enough to shift diet over time. The vampiric curse from consuming flesh and blood if it turned out that eating dead animal flesh or drink blood gave me superhuman powers, as if humans were vampiric, I would still not eat it in its current form. This is because of my core values. Factory farms are an atrocity. It's not something I can be aware of, and then pretend doesn't exist just so I can have superhuman powers. The only justification I can think of is I'd use my superhuman powers to end factory farming. An agar-egan is someone who agrees with veganism but has looser rules for themselves. I have a plant-based diet, with some exceptions. I boycott animal products for the most part, but if I am offered food that has an animal product in it, I will weigh the pros and cons and eat it if it feels like the right thing to do socially, or so it will not go to waste. I buy honey from the farmer's market because the beekeepers have a holistic and sustainable practice, not clipping the queen's wings so she can leave if she wants, and only taking a percentage of the honey in exchange for protection from the beekeepers. What we buy and eat has the biggest influence on the world than anything else we do. It is the single most important way we influence our health, the environment, other sentient beings and our spirituality. Therefore what we choose to eat should be in alignment with our personal belief of what kind of world we want to live in. This is an important movement of our time because of the devastating health, environmental and ethical destruction caused by the ignorance of eating a standard American diet known as carnism. Now that we live in the 21st century where we have access to scientifically researched nutritional information stating that a plant-based vegan diet is more healthy than a carnist diet, an agar egan diet provides a way to escape the ignorance and mental cage known as the matrix, without the level of sacrifice and strictness required to be vegan. The animal agriculture industry has spent billions to create a false image of meat and dairy that plagues our society. Agariganism is the declaration that the individual is aware of this and is taking steps to reject carnism and animal agriculture. By doing so an agarigan makes a positive stand for their health, society, the animals, the environment, and the world.